There are several simple stories and again it's to do with our endeavor to understand the nature of emptiness. There was a seeker after truth and enlightenment so he set out to become a wandering mendicant to seek far and wide that which would bring him his goal. So as was the custom in those days and still is, he took his begging bowl and he set out and wherever he arrived he immersed himself in the teachings, the traditions, the rituals, the religion, the faiths of the place in which he found himself. And when he left, he would take an effigy of the god or gods of that place and he would incorporate that in his daily rituals. But he went from country to country and soon he had a belt laden with effigies of all the gods that he collected along the way and he had so many rituals to perform when he got up or in the middle of the night he hardly slept and he, he could hardly take ten paces because he had no time he was so laden down with. So one day when he was taking his few steps there was an old monk coming the other way and met him on the road and, and said to the young man look at you, why are you laden with so many well, said the, the young man I, every one of these gods is representative of a faith and, and I'm following all the rituals because that's how I come to learn truth and enlightenment Oh, well, he said, the old monk said, but you're making no progress at all. Well, the young man said, well, what can I do, what can I do about it? And the old monk gave him some advice. He said, why don't you bang these effigies together and see which one is left? And that will be the one that you should follow. So the the young man thought this, this was a very good idea. So after giving each one their honor and going through the little ritual that was required of that particular god, he banged them together. And inevitably they crumbled and, and uh, shattered on the ground until finally he was left with only one effigy. And he thought to himself, well, this must be the one. This must be the one that I should follow. But then he thought to himself, well, how am I going to test it? To see if it's the one. And then he suddenly remembered his baking bowl under his cloak. So he brought out his baking bowl. And after giving the little ritual that was required of this effigy of the god, he banged it against his baking bowl and the effigy shattered into a little pile on the ground. So now, left only with his baking bowl, he strode off down the road. And then, in a time, when there were a great number of monks walking the roads with their begging bowls and begging was a tradition in all of the Buddhist monasteries and of course had been before Buddha's time also. But in one particular monastery the young acolytes were embarrassed to go begging. And they used to giggle and titter between themselves and some of them would refuse to go out into the town. Uh, some of them would hide in doorways so that they wouldn't uh, be seen. 
and others would very shyly stand out with their little bell or making some almost silent chant. And, you know, the head monk was really very quite distressed about this attitude, this attitude of these monks, and he admonished them about it, and he lectured them about it for many hours, but it didn't seem to make any difference at all to the way they presented themselves. And this came to the attention of the abbot. So he called each one of the accolades into him and asked them what they perceived as the reason for begging. And each of them gave a distinctly different answer. So this wasn't going to do. So the abbot called all of the accolades together and he said, Yes, I can see that you have embarrassment because robes monks do give you a dignified state of them of their nature they dignified but you want dignity and so you're embarrassed when you go begging so I have an antidote for this because one cannot have dignity without need. So I am going to give you a need. Well, the accolades were all very happy because they were going to receive something from the abbot. But the abbot went off into the kitchen and he said, to the cooks, no more food. <laughs> From that day on, the monks got thinner, their bellies grumbled, and when they went out into the streets with their begging bowl, they chanted like you wouldn't believe. They rang their bells with great <coughs> Long. And after some time, the abbot called them all together again and said, This has been a useless exercise, but it has served the purpose of obliterating dignity because when you stood out with your need, there was no dignity, there was no embarrassment. So you have learned a fundamental reason for making. And now, perhaps, there's a possibility that you can plumb its depths and find out the true purpose, the true significance of what your begging bowl means. So the question that can be posed from these two simple stories is what is the significance of the begging bowl for you. Remembering that we're endeavouring to understand the nature of emptiness. What significance would the deep reason for the monks and the mendicants begging bowls have in relationship to this emptiness. But perhaps if we look at its significance on those three levels of existence and very clearly we can see that we can 
find and express on those three levels, the nitty-gritty, the airy-fairy and the transcendental, knowing that there's something beyond this. But if we explore the reasons on those three levels, we have the possibility of moving closer ourselves to the baking bowl that we carry and emptiness, just as explained in what's been spoken by Marianne. But what comes up for you first, from wh wherever, as to what the significance of the baking bowl is? Total humility. Yes, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. And surrender. Yes. Total humility and surrender. And? Isn't that the symbol of emptiness itself? Because the, the bowl has nothing in it? Yes, right. Could it be? That that's its deep significance? Mm. Yes, because in the end we have to do the same. Yeah. What is real? When we discover that emptiness is the only thing that's real, of course, it's infallible. No reality is going to be able to survive, none. So it has very, very deep meaning, doesn't it? Yes. But an interesting exercise to take these steps, what it means on the nitty gritty level, <coughs> what it means on the aesthetic level and what it means on the transcendent level, the level of oneness, so that we can have the possibility of coming to understand the nature of emptiness. These are only ploys, but all of these stories are just ploys anyway. But just for the sake of an exercise, it's an interesting thing to do. See how you know I could apply it on the nitty gritty because that's you know so much is actually taken away in this process. They take you know don't don't give them any food. Uh -huh. So you know that I can see how that's taken away and possibly the transcendental being I can understand just from my own process, how I've um, encountered so many different ways and so many different gurus and so many different teachings and I've banged them up against this bowl and there's just, you know, there's nothing left. Mm. But I'm a bit lost on the airy fairy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't quite know how I'd apply it or what. So you have a little... You have a little endeavour 
and we do have the clues within these simple stories to do that. And it's important, it's an important little process for us to recognize that. What, what does it mean? What is the significance of a begging bowl on the, on the esoteric levels, on the spiritual level, the, the level of magic and all? This is what we're looking at now, the isn't it? The level of magic is the is the is the esoteric level of life. So if you look at it at that level, what is the significance of the begging bowl to us in the progression of our life at that level? What would it mean for us? We already have enough food, and yet we hold out this bowl. What does it mean on that spiritual level for us? Where did we have to arrive at? to be able to hold out, or to be able to receive and not judge what we were receiving, whatever experience it was. If it was gruel, we ate gruel. If it was rice, we ate rice. If it was rancid vegetables, we ate rancid. Isn't that so? If we look at it at this uh, esoteric level. And we've had to do that, haven't we? Haven't we had to pass through that level? where we looked at the experiences of life, whatever comes into our bowl, and eat it, that's life. <laughs> whatever it was, bitter, sweet, whatever. So we've lived through these states of this, ba this baking bowl. Thank you, thank you.